I want to show everybody our Lely Vector. This is our fully automated Lely Vector feeding system. This is post-mixing post a batch of feed right now. So while it's doing that, we're going to talk about how this thing works. So we have bays of feed here in the kitchen. We call the kitchen uh, where we store all the different feed ingredients. So in the first bay in this kitchen, we have corn silage. In the second bay, we have haylage, and behind that is cottonseed. We have ground corn in a pile here. And like I said in the intro video, at some point I'll, I'll touch that a little bit more again. And you can see our bay for our rye and dry cow corn silage is empty. So those are gonna be the first two ingredients I get in the morning. And when I get those, I usually put everything to the back of the pile. Because the way the grabber works is the grabber starts at the back of the pile and works its way forward. You can see here I brought this uh, corn silage in in the morning in our dump trailer. So one dump trailer is one day's worth of corn silage. So this grabber starts in the back over there gets that block eaten down, and then goes to the second block, third block, fourth block, fifth block. In the winter time, I can probably get three or four days worth of corn silage in here, and I have definitely done that before. A lot of people on TikTok have asked how I keep this fresh in the summertime. Obviously with corn silage coming out of a bag, we have a Versa bagger, which I think has been critical for keeping this corn silage stable and prevent it from heating. But in the summertime, when it's above 90, I don't care what you have, you're gonna struggle with that, even, even before we had the vector. We, we had to dump feed twice a day, clean up more often. But with this, I'll bring 40% of my feed in in the morning, early as I can. I'll bring the other 60% in in the afternoon. So this takes me about 45 minutes to fill the kitchen now, doing it all in the morning. If I do it twice a day, it takes me about an hour. So a little bit more time, but it keeps this corn silage very fresh. Now the haylage usually isn't an issue. I usually do all the haylage in the morning, regardless of the weather. Corn silage, when it's above 90, 40% in the morning, 60% in the afternoon. This is what we use to fill up that kitchen. So this is our dump trailer. It's a triple axle, big text trailer. It's windy out here. I hope you can hear me. This is a 5125R. We just got this tractor last May. We just pick it up with the dump trailer, haul it down to where the bags are, fill it up, hook it back up, bring it back up here. Now the MFR, so this is the MFR, mixing and feeding robot. That is the grabber, just so we're all familiar with terminology. This post mixed for six minutes, and now it's gonna go out and dump. So you can see that's what it looks like in there. Inside of that is just like any normal vertical TMR mixer. This is the charging port. So when it connects into there, that gets exposed. So it's going to turn around. It is going to feed over here. Well, I take that back. It actually might not be feeding over here, but it, it makes the same route every time. So the way this works is it's going to go over there, go across that fence, turn right here, come this way. Follow this strip, and then it's going to go down that side of the barn, turn around, come back up this side of the barn, find the strip again, and head back to the charger. Big questions I get on this. How much does it cost? Why do we do it? I have no problem telling people, this machine costs right around $200,000. The reason we justified that is because we were able to shave almost $100,000 off of our building design by incorporating that machine. It also prevented us from having to buy a $50,000 tractor and TMR mixer. We were going to have to get a bigger tractor and a bigger mixer if we didn't do that. We were also going to have to get a feed pusher. That's another $25,000. So I'm already up to $150,000, $175,000 of that $200,000. So when we looked at our total barn budget, this machine basically fit in our budget without having to change anything. If we wouldn't have done the vector, this is a robot room here. So we have robot one, robot two, and robot three. Robot 2 would have had to have been on that outside wall over there because I would have had to have gotten a tractor and mixer from there all the way through. I couldn't have a robot smack dab in the middle of the barn here. So that would have made the building over there, for sure the length of the robot room, 25 foot, but then instead of having a fetch pen, and I'll explain that in a later video what a fetch pen is, that fetch pen would have been tagged onto the end of that robot room. So we're looking at 50 foot of barn that it would have added just by moving that room over. The other thing that's very important, and this is where guys like Nigel Cook or Ken Nordland would probably throw the book at me, is because this vector is dumping fresh feed to these milk cows every three hours, I can get by with a few less headlocks and a few less stalls, which makes the building even shorter yet. 
So normally for dairy cows, people will tell you you want 24 inches of headlock space per cow. So two foot per cow to eat. So there's two foot here, two foot here, two foot here. So if I have 120 cows, I should have 120 headlocks, right? Fortunately with this vector and the robots, I only have 55 and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 56. So I'm just over a hundred headlocks. So I think it came out to like 19 inches, 18 inches. Someone can do the math and let me know how close or far off I am, but it's somewhere around there. So if I was two foot per cow, that would have been another 20 headlocks, another 24 foot. That'd be about 40 foot. So you, you can see by doing this, it shaved a lot of money off our building costs and tin, lumber, cement, headlocks. We have rubber mat matting in the alleyways. That's crazy expensive per foot. The chain for the scrapers, uh, the labor to do all those things. So it shaved that much expense off that this vector easily fit within our budget. Driving until it finds that strip. And it found the strip, so it's gonna feed this fence right here. That is my phone sending notifications. Let's just turn that off. So you can see they had a decent chunk of feed left here yet. But you can see how many of them respond to a fresh feed dump. And it pushed feedback over here, but we're not getting quite the response as we are here. What do you think, girl? There's Katie coming up to get some feed. So you can see, even though it dumped fresh feed and we're getting a good response, every headlock section still isn't full. We have a gap there, we have a gap there, we have a gap there, there. So normally when we would dump feed with the old way, which is the way most farms do it, which is still a really great way to feed cows. But the problem we had was if you dumped all your feed in the morning or twice a day, you would get almost every cow in the herd come up to eat. So if you have 60 cows in that pen, you would need 60 headlocks. But you can see how many, cow, you can see how many cows are still laying down because they probably got the last batch of feed that was dumped three hours ago. You can see we have a couple spaces here. Oh, she's gonna come eat. This section's a little full, but there we got a space. Over there we got a space. When it's pushing back feed, the other thing it's doing is scanning how much feed is there. So you can see that laser there is measuring the height in inches of the feed that's currently there. Now obviously here it's gonna be higher because it's just dumped, but when it gets over here, it's gonna scan how much is left. So we have three fences in the barn, south one, south two, and north. So when it comes around and does its route, it determines which one of those fences needs feed the most, goes back over to the kitchen, mixes it up, and brings it out. So Laley calls this a feed to need program, and many other automated feeders, and I'm not sure, I think almost all of them run off of an automatic mm -hmm. timer. So they're not a feed to need, they just run off of a certain schedule. So you can see here it pushed feed back, and there's plenty of feed there. And over there, dump fresh feed. So clearly, this tells us that cows respond well to fresh feed. Now from back there, it looks crowded, but once I get closer, like I said, we just don't see that competition for every single animal in the herd to come up and eat. So you can see we have plenty of space down this headlocks for more animals to come up and eat if they were to choose to. Other benefits we saw from the Spectre is we're only using about $2 a day in electricity to run this whole thing. In 17 months, I've only spent about $1,000 in maintenance. We installed this whole robot barn. I don't have a great explanation for this, 
but our overall electric bill dropped around 900 bucks a month. We also know that fresh feed drives milk in, or drives intakes, and intakes drive milk production. So on an energy corrected milk basis, we did see a jump of 10 to 12 pounds from turning this machine on. <clears throat> Excuse me, before we had this in 2018, 2019, we probably averaged around 88 to 92 pounds of energy corrected milk. Those of you who aren't familiar, energy corrected milk takes into account butter fat and protein into the overall milk production calculation. So if you were at 100 pounds of milk per cow, you know, let's say you ship 18,000 pounds and you have 180 cows, that's 100 pounds per cow. But if you're at a three and a half, 3.5% butter fat and 3% protein, your energy corrected milk is 100. Three and a half and three was the baseline. Now let's say you go to four and three one, I don't know the calculator in my head, but that's gonna put you above 100 pounds of energy corrected milk. So our energy corrected milk after we put this in, it, it jumped easily 10 to 12 pounds and we've even seen increases of 18 pounds more than where we used to be before this. And in case any of you are wondering, there's nothing wrong with this feed where it just pushed back, where cows aren't eating it. It's, I know you can't smell it, but it still smells good. It's not sorted. They just really respond well when they see a fresh feed dump. Now it's gonna finish its route, head back to the charger and get instructions for the next batch of feed that needs to be mixed. You can see it's a little dusty. It's, it's in its work clothes. I can't say we've ever actually really given it a bath. It just gets covered in feed dust, straw dust, corn dust. And on this side particularly, you can see where the cows lick it all over the place. So it doesn't make sense to really clean this side ever. Here's one of our robots milking some cows. Well, one cow just left. You can see how much cleaner this side is where cows can't actively lick it all the time. Now it's gonna come back and find the charger. And it's gonna wait and get instructions for the next batch of feed to be mixed. And there it goes. Now technically we're not supposed to be able to go in here, but I do have the uh, safety sensor bypass, so just I can walk in here. So it's gonna scan back and forth and find the tallest point of the pile. So it thought, so this is a great example. It thought this bay here was empty. So it's moving forward to go to this bay. This is Halage, if you can't tell. That laser is gonna find the tall point. And it's offset because the laser's on the side, so it compensates. It knows so many millimeters over from the laser is the tall point. So when this grabber is grabbing halage, when it lifts up, those of you from farm world who are familiar with side one loaders know that your side one loaders have amp meters on them. So if it's biting a lot of silage, those amps are really pulling harder because it's, it's drawn more on the motor. Same concept here. When this grabber is lifting up a payload, it's sensing how many amps it's drawing and it's using those amps to estimate how much weight it's lifting. So if it does grab too much, It'll dump it, raise up a little bit, and try again. If it doesn't have enough, it'll just come back for another bucket. As a whole, the system on the mix is running 96 to 97% accurate. On corn silage especially, it's like 99% accurate. Now the MFR, the mixing feeding robot, does have load cells on it. So as the grabber dumps it in there, it confirms if the estimation from the grabber was correct. And you can see halage is a little bit sticky. So the bucket has wipers in there. You can see them come down right there. Those get all of the sticky halage out of the bucket. Now it's gonna go for corn silage.
And good timing again. It thought that bay was empty, so it's gonna move forward to this bay. Right there, you can see the laser. When it's full, it can grab up to 100 pounds of this corn silage in one bite. So right now it's sensing how many amps it's, it's lifting and it's using that to estimate how much weight. And like I said, on this corn silage, it's about 99% accurate. It's gonna keep going like that until it's full. So it grabs every ingredient at random. This way the mix in the MFR stays as homogenous as possible. It's not adding all of one, all the other, all the next. About halfway through, it goes to add the protein and we feed out molasses product. It's got way in molasses in it, just another energy source. It will go outside to feed dry cows. Uh, we have one barn that's a little farther away. At some point I'll send it out there, but I gotta get some cement from the cattle yard that was poured in the 70s, it doesn't hold up like it used to. So for that far off barn, we dump dry cow feed right here along this wall. I'll dump two batches and it's just two skid loader buckets and we cart it over there. It really doesn't take very long. So we have a far off dry cow pen and we have a close up dry cow pen. So the close up pen is where they calve. So it will go outside for that route and I'm able to run it out this route 99% of the year. There was one week, about one week every winter, I won't run it out here and I'll just dump that over in the kitchen as well. And then I'll just bucket that up there with the skid loader. But other than that, this route is on fully automatic. So it follows this strip and it heads up there to where our cows calve. So this is our calving barn. This was built back in 2017. So we didn't feel the need to build a whole new barn and add it onto our, our new milk cow barn. In the summertime, I clean up feed probably a couple times a week. I try to make sure the cows can eat it down low enough so it's not just dumping fresh feed on top of fresh feed and, and burying it and causing the rest of it to go bad. In the winter time, I can go weeks without cleaning up feed, as long as something funny didn't happen with the feed where there's a bad spot. But being it's getting dumped every three hours, really just doesn't give them an opportunity to sort. But when it does get above 90, through the night, I'll tell it to not dump until it gets below an inch. And then they'll get it eight and down. So the goal is when I get it here in the morning, there's not a lot left. And if it's not spoiled, I'll bucket that up and feed it to the dry cows. If it is spoiled, when it's 95 degrees, it's kind of hard to avoid that. It'll usually just go onto the manure pile to go back out to the field to be fertilizer. I think that's about it. So you can see there, it's grabbing some straw. It's just gonna keep on mixing. Let me know if I missed anything or comment if you want further ex explanation on something, if I can talk. Um, yeah, I think I covered it all. So comment if you wanna learn more.